Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing. Today I'm going to be creating some clay molds uh, using a couple of Prima Marketing um, molds and then a couple different kinds of clay. There I'm just showing the creative paper clay, but I also did use DOS clay a little bit later on in the process. Um, I did use some baby powder to um, help with the release of the clay from the mold, which um, does help. Um, I haven't done this process in quite some time, and so um, you're going to see me struggle um, a little bit, um, sometimes a lot, um, because I became unfamiliar with the process. So um, I have done these before um, and had good success, but it's been a while as well as um, the clay if it, the clay gets dried out it's just not as easy to work with it's more crumbly um, which makes sense but um, I this this first clay that I'm using is the creative paper clay and later I use the DOS clay um, and I liked the DOS clay better so um, I and which I believe is the first one I ever tried so um, you're going to be able to see the difference as I move along um, between the two, um, just as I describe it, as well as what you see me doing. It was much more, it was much easier to do. Um, and these, um, again, these molds are from Prima Marketing. Um, you can, uh, they are Prima Marketing. You can get them at scrapbook.com. Um, most of mine I've gotten at scrapbook.com, but I have also gotten some of them off of Amazon. Uh, so you can get them on Amazon, but, um, I really like scrapbook.com because, um, I like supporting that business. Um, they have, uh, incredible products. Um, their shipping is very quick. Um, their prices are very competitive and they have a huge supply. Uh, so lots of variety. They have a lot of molds. So, um, well worth checking them out. I'll be sure to put them in the uh, link in the video description. Um, but, um, here you can see, I'm trying uh, again, a variety of things. I'm, I'm trying to rub my finger, you know, towards me and then away from me to try to release the clay that is not part of the mold, um, which was my biggest challenge with this session was, um, being able to differentiate, um, what, where the clay needed to stay, because you're not actually looking at the mold when you're at this point, you're kind of flying blind. So, um, I was thinking about maybe taking a photograph of the mold, um, and printing it out and, and keeping it with the mold so that I could actually be looking at it might help the process, unless you're super familiar with the mold. If you've used it time and time again, then the, this wouldn't be an issue. But um, I actually just got this mold for Christmas. Um, just it's it's uh, April and I've just used it for the first time. So um, it this is a little bit messier for me and it's not my preferred craft. Um, but I thought I would give it a try. And since I was going to play with it, I would go ahead and film it so that you could see, um, mainly just because I want to show off these molds. They're just incredible, uh, well worth the investment in my opinion. And I really love the rosebuds. Um, and if you, uh, have been watching my channel at all, um, I say it again and again, uh, roses are my heart. Um, and so anytime I can get my hands on something that's a beautiful rose that I can incorporate into my art, I am going to do that. Um, so these buds were super cute and really fun. They were pretty easy to work with, um, even though they're obviously much smaller than the bigger flowers that you see there. And then I'll be taking out these designs out of the mold and then I'll be coming back to do that, that daisy looking flower there um, by my hand. I'm excited to use these in a mixed media project. Um, I, I like to use metal and wood and chipboard and all kinds of things in my mixed media art. Um, and the molds are uh, another great, or these designs are a really great um, thing to use to create a mixed media kind of assemblage or scene or, um, you know, whatever uh, you want to do there. They add a great element to your project. Um, 
And as I'm taking them out, obviously they're still wet. They're, they're not dry. Um, and so they do bend and the mold bends as well. And then there I was able to just use my finger to kind of smooth out those, um, those rough edges, um, which I don't know if I was doing something incorrectly or if this is just the nature of it, I'm not sure. Um, again, I think I'll, I'll go check out Tiffany Solario again and see uh, what she does, but um, they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, well worth the time and energy spent. So cute little rosebud. Love it. Uh, but you can paint them with acrylic paint. Um, with these, they're uh, fairly porous and the clay is. And so I don't usually have to prep them with gesso or anything. I can just uh, put acrylic paint on them. The resin ones I did uh, when I did resin before, and I can't remember if I um, mentioned that because this is like the third voiceover attempt. Um, they keep having computer issues, but um, I did use a molds, not this particular one, but some other ones um, a while ago, um, and I used resin in them, which I really loved. It was in many ways easier. Um, in other ways, it was harder because I had overflow. Um, and so the resin would um, seep over the lines into another another section. And then when it dried, it was really difficult because I had to obviously with resin, I had to leave the I had to leave it in the mold until it was completely dry. Um, so I didn't discover that there was that that um, spillage over into the other design until I took them out and and they dried hard as a rock. And so I couldn't some of them I couldn't um, use for the purpose that I had created them for because they were messy and just difficult. But um, I think if I had like a pipette or something that I could actually um, squirt that resin into the mold, um, I might have better success. So the next time I try resin, I'm going to do that. Um, but the clay, using the clay is pretty simple. It's not I mean, it's a little bit messy, but it's does the cleanup is is easy, and um, you know, it's it's no big deal. Um, so the next one I'm doing is that really large um, vine uh, with the mini leaves, the larger one. Um, really, really wrestled with this, like really wrestled with it because it was such an intricate design with so many parts that um, I debated over how to get the clay in there. Um, in the best way and in the most time saving way. So you're, you're seeing me put it in like this and then I take it right back out and then uh, end up using way too much clay as you see there. And then that just ended up creating all kinds of work for me uh, to get not only just extra clay that wouldn't even fit in the mold, but um, just, it was just a mess. So um, this one was definitely my nemesis. I didn't, uh, I didn't have a lot of success. I mean, I, I finished it. I got it out of the mold. It's beautiful, but it, uh, it took me a long time. So, um, and, um, it's so funny because some things that worked on their flower molds didn't work on this. So, uh, it's just really interesting. Um, I think there's, this is definitely one of those things that's just going to take practice um, and, you know, just trial and error and figuring out what, what you like. Um, it was really hard on my hands. So if you have issues with your hands and strengthen your hands, um, this might prove to be very challenging. Um, there's a lot of pressing, there's a lot of rubbing, um, and uh, my hands were pretty tired uh, when I was done. But um, again, uh, worth worth the effort, uh, at least in my opinion, for me. Um, but and I hope that I hope that you enjoy it. I mean, I, I figure if I'm going to create, I may as well just turn the camera on and see if I come up with anything good that I can share with you guys. So that's what I'm doing here. But this one just had so many leaves and a lot of fine lines. And it also had these little like little circles. I don't know if they're supposed to be like a part of the leaves or 
berries or I don't know what they were supposed to be, but, um, they were very difficult. Um, and when I get the, um, this out of the mold, um, you'll be able to see that the edges are, especially around those little balls was really, was really messy. Um, so I have to figure out a better way to do it <laughs> for sure. But so here, I'm just going to fuss with this and just let you watch. Um, I didn't want to cut too much out because I didn't, I don't want to misrepresent, misrepresent the process. Um, it is time consuming. Um, um, yeah. Um, better to see what it really looks like than to make it look like, Oh, magic of YouTube and it's all done. So, um, that's why I'm leaving this in and just letting you kind of watch it. Uh, I was using water here on my finger uh, for this. And, um, again, at points the water worked and at other times it, it didn't do anything for me. So this one just went on and on and on and on. <laughs> so crazy. but she's almost done now. I can take her out. Well worth it because the detail on this mold is absolutely amazing. Amazing. Um, I've heard actually that there have been people that actually use hot glue in their molds and that might be something up my alley, um, especially in a smaller mold because I have some molds that are just really tiny like a little maybe half half dollar size um, fl flowers um, that hot glue might work really well I can't imagine you could use hot glue in a design that's this big um, because your your glue would dry but I mean it would it dries it gets hard almost instantly so I'm not sure how that works but might be worth playing with and here's the big reveal and this one, I did get my really small palette knife out and I used it to kind of shave off and cut off uh, the excess clay, as you can see there, where I was just pointing. Um, I don't show you that whole process because, again, it was pretty time consuming, um, but it it was an effective um, way to, to kind of get that extra clay off. Um, and now I'm going to do that other leaf on the lower right hand corner thought I'd give that one a try since it's a little bit more condensed um, and doesn't have as much um, detail. It has design detail, but not, it didn't have whatever uh, 12 leaves on it. So a um, little bit easier to even consider. So, and again, it's been a while since I've done this. And so I was not, um, it was not fresh in my mind what I had tried before um, and what I had not. And so um, kind of like doing it for the first time here. I also wondered if like a femo clay would work. Um, because femo clay doesn't have to be baked, I don't think, um, for the purposes that I would use it. Um, and it's, it might be, it might be worth a try too. I have some just left over from other art that I've done in the past. So I might have to give that a try as well. Never know. Doesn't hurt to try folks. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull this leaf out and then I'm going to move on to the next, um, the next mold, which, um, has some angel wings. And I do show a whole bunch of molds, but I didn't end up using them all, um, uh, because by this point in the process, I, my hands were getting really tired. Um, but here's just close up of all of those designs there. Just gorgeous, gorgeous embellishments. These are going to make so. And then, yeah, that one. So I didn't, um, I tried the, one of the crosses in the, one of the blue 
molds there, but they're a candy making mold, the blue ones, and I they respond a little bit differently. And they do work. I've done them before. Um, I just again, I I was didn't want to fuss with them during this session. So I tried one and then I gave up. So on this one, this is another Prima mold, and I'm just going to do those large ang angel wings. And then I'll also be doing that little um, heart pendant. And this is where I switch to the other clay and I'm using um, a clay called DOS. Uh, you've probably seen it, but it was much easier to work with. Like it was, there was like no comparison. Um, the way that it went in, the way I was able to smooth it out. Um, so I'm definitely going to go back to the drawing board and use that, um, especially with some of those other designs I already did um, because it worked much better. Um, and I don't know... Um, I don't know if, if the other clay was dried out somewhat or if it's just got a different, it's just got a different makeup that it responds differently. I'm not sure. I don't know enough about it. Um, so I, I've had it a while. I haven't tried it a lot. So, and then just here doing the second large wing. And as you can see, even, even though this is sped up, I didn't cut out any of the struggle here. Um, and you can see just how much easier this DOS clay was. I didn't have to, um, it didn't wear me out. I didn't feel like I was fighting the clay. It just was much smoother. Um, it seemed like the clay was more pliable and it, I, it allowed me to move it um, better than the other one. So, but the angel wings are another one of my favorites. If I could put wings in everything I could create, I probably would too, kind of like my roses. Um, but uh, I, I love angel wings and these ones again are super intricate and really, really cool. And so there I'm using that card and it did, it just wasn't doing it for me. It worked in other things and it, it didn't necessarily work on this. So I'm not sure. I don't think there's a science. I think it's just like art and, you know, it just, you just never know. And you can create techniques and create ways that you have figured out that things work well um, and things that you prefer. But, you know, at the end of the day, it really is still just about play and experimenting. But you can see there that there, there were no rough edges. It just came out really clean, which means that I got those edges on the mold uh, off. So here is where I was going to try to do that uh, cross in the upper right hand corner, but um, it didn't work um, at all. <laughs> um, and so um, I tried it, but then I just, I gave up. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about the heart pendant. Um, the blue molds that you see, I did use those with resin and they worked out really well. And I think it's because there's a little bit more gap um, between the designs and the mold. They're actually, I believe, a candy making mold, um, which um, proves uh, challenging too because the molds themselves are not as flexible as these Prima molds that I'm working with now. Um, but um, I like the designs and I thought, you know, they were inexpensive and I'll figure out a way to make them work. Um, so, so again, I've done clay in them before and I also did resin in them and it worked really, really well. Just need to refine the resin process because it was super messy. But this, this little um, heart pendant thing was just gorgeous when I took it out. Really beautiful. kind of got misshapen taking it out, but it's easily because it's all still wet and pliable. So that's nice. And then here's where I'm going to try the cross <laughs> in the upper right hand corner. It didn't work. Um, but again, I was I was getting tired by this point and I just didn't have any more in me to to try something that I knew was going to be more challenging than using the Prima mold. So um, I try the one cross and then I scrap it and then I'm going to move on to some other Prima molds that I didn't show in the beginning of the video. Um, I grabbed them as I moved through just deciding that I wanted to use the clay that was already out on my desk um, because again this clay is old um, and I'm going to replace it. So I thought I'll go ahead and give it a try, see if I can make any of it work. 
um, and then uh, a move on. So I did pull out some other molds so that you could see those as well. But yeah, this this cross just didn't didn't work at all. I I get it all smoothed out and then I take it out and it breaks and it's just like uh, it's not the mold isn't as deep either as the Primo molds um, and probably because that they're not designed for clay. Um, I was just using it this way because it, they were cheap and I wanted to play with them. So <laughs> um, with nothing wrong with that, we use things all the time for other purposes for which they're not designed. So it's good. But she did not want to come out at all. Um, these these other molds are not um, as bendable either. So they were they were just much more of a headache. Um, and by this point, I was I was getting done. Just a little real life for you there. <laughs> um, I've done um, this mold before, um, the little angel with the wings on the bottom and then the one that's kind of standing up. Um, I did those the last time I did these and they turned out really, really good. Um, but today I'm going to do that one on the top and then the two scrolly designs there. Um, which again, I think because they don't have a lot of, they have intricate detail, um, in the bottom of the, um, the mold, but the shape itself is not terribly complex. Um, and I think that makes a difference in how, you know, what kind of results you get, uh, when you're creating these, but, um, that's just my opinion. But again, I'm not, I'm not a expert and, um, kind of have a love hate relationship with it. Um, I love the results, but the process can be really trying at times. So and so again, this is still the DOS clay. And even even in this process, I can tell that it was easier. Um, it was easier to pull the clay off to get the excess off just by rubbing my finger. Um, whereas the creative paper clay that I used at the beginning of the video, it just was not as easy to work with. It was harder to get off. Um, it was harder to s smooth out. Um, so this is by far not a review of any kind. Um, just my feedback about having used both, especially in the same creative session um, and to, to kind of decide which one I prefer. Um, probably it's not an apples to apples test because or a true accurate evaluation because the the paper clay was uh, has been around a while I've had it so it might be a little bit old. So in all fairness it's probably a great product and maybe one day I'll get some fresh paper clay and try that again. This design came out really clean. Um, I was concerned because it felt like it was really thin, um, especially along the edges, but maybe that's part of the success um, is just you only have the clay that fits in the mold itself, nothing hanging over. Um, so this one was really beautiful. A little difficult to get out. You can only bend the mold so much, um, but look at that, it's beautiful. Love it. Um, so, you know, my hands were really yucky and dry and sticky. So I didn't, um, I didn't play a lot with this because, um, again, I, it, I was just messy. <laughs> um, but once they dried, I discovered, um, I went cause I moved them from one place to another in the studio. And I noticed that by just brushing my finger on them, once they were dry, some of those extra bits that weren't part of the design just kind of fell off. Um, because they were dry. So um, that's kind of good to know that to not spend a lot of time necessarily when the clay is wet and be able to get some of that off still a little bit later uh, when it's drier. And then I think here, this was a good process for creating or for putting my clay in because um, I, even though there's still a lot of clay there, probably more than I needed, um, by rolling it in a, in a kind of a log, um, strip, um, I think that you're, it's a better success because it's still less clay going into the mold, um, in that confined space. So 
But again, as I play with this again and again, I, I'll learn more. And I'm sure that you will as well if you decide to, to give this a try. Um, I, I don't know that I'm giving it a fair representation here um, because I really struggled, um, partly because I haven't done it in a while. But um, I hope that you'll give it a try. It's um, I wouldn't trade it, trade it for anything. I mean, it was worth the time. It was worth the frustration um, to get what I got out of it. So, um, and it's just a different way to, it's a different kind of art. Um, and you can create some cool embellishments um, that are really fun to use in mixed media. So, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something I know that I did in the creating of it. Um, I would highly recommend you give it a try. Uh, it's well worth the time um, and the investment in my opinion. Um, I hope that you'll um, come back and visit my channel again real soon. Check out what else I've got going on. I do do Water Media Wednesday every week. Um, and we do a little bit different process in every video as well as some other um, tutorials. So um, take care. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. Take care of your families. Blessings to you. Thanks for watching.